hallelujah, hallelujah, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking in the sky? The Lord will return, just as you have seen him ascend, hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare to offer this Holy Mass, let us now pause and call to mind our sins. Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. You came to plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. You will forgive us our sins and bless us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest of east was people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray that the risen Christ will lead us to eternal life. God, our Father, make us joyful in the ascension of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we follow him into the new creation, for his ascension is our glory and our hope. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days I will be, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking up intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Announce his joy, his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. Announce his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Announce his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. 
announces joy to, to his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory and his inheritance among the holy ones? What is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him in his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come, he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached them and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. It's difficult to believe that it's already been over 40 days since we celebrated the resurrection at Easter. As we come to the, the end of the Easter season, we commemorate this time when Jesus ended his life and ministry on earth and was taken up to the Father. Before he left, he promised that he would be with us always. He promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to complete the work that he had started in his followers. And he also left the great mystery of his body and blood in the Eucharist. We are told that after Jesus was taken up, that his followers spent nine days in prayer asking what it was that they were to do. How were they to fulfill this commission that he left with them 
that of going out and making new followers to bring new people to the good news of this gospel message. In the first reading, we have Luke describing this time that how he had taught them all the way up to the time of the ascension, that he proved to them that he was truly alive, that he wasn't a ghost, that he was preparing them for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he, he stresses that Jesus told them not to leave until the time was right. They were also asking him, you know, when, when is, is all of these things that you have preached to us coming to pass? When will Israel be restored to its kingdom? Still thinking that the kingdom that Jesus talked about was an actual earthly kingdom. And Jesus says, wait a minute, this really isn't any of your concern. Even when it happens, you'll know. But for right now, you are to concentrate on me and my message. And then you will be my witnesses in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and eventually to us. And then he left. I almost wonder if this second leaving may even have been more difficult than his death and burial. They go through all of that great emotional upheaval of losing him. And then here he is back again. Now he's gone again. What's going to happen? Did they have hope that something was going, something great was going to happen? Did they believe that something great was going to happen? Or were they just empty and thinking, my gosh, what next? Hard to say, as we were not there. We were also not first century. Peasants, fishermen, and all of the assorted flotsam and jetsam that Jesus gathered around him. But what does this say to us today? What does it say to us who never even knew him face to face like they did? Do we believe? Do we have hope? Do we have faith that God's Spirit will come to us and fill us and enlighten us. And what will His Spirit tell us? I think that what the Spirit will tell us is pretty much the same thing that our Gospel tells us every time we read it. Go out and be witnesses to this Jesus, to go out and care for our fellow men and women, as did this Jesus of Nazareth. He never asked them what they believed. He never lectured them. He fed them. He healed them. He comforted them. And that is what we are I find it interesting that in the Gospels, Jesus rarely preaches theology of any kind. He never defines who or what God is, with the exception of speaking of his relationship with the Father and the relationship he wants us to have with him and his Father. He doesn't have a list of theological tenets that we are obliged to believe. But 
yet. He speaks over and over and over again. Love your neighbor, serve your neighbor, care for your neighbor, give of yourself to your neighbor. If your neighbor asks you for your cloak, giving him, give them your coat too. Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor, then come follow me. We are constantly called by Jesus to service. The apostles are told to go out and preach the good news and heal the sick and serve the people of God. We are called to go out and serve the people of God. As we prepare ourselves for the solemn commemoration of the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which has also been called the actual beginning of the church. When the church was established, the Holy Spirit came and filled the disciples, the apostles, the followers, and they actually became that gathering we call the church. As we prepare to commemorate these beginnings, we are called to look into our own hearts, our minds, our souls, and see how we too can enter into that mystery called the church. The mysterious, mysterious, mystical body of Christ. Are we other Jesus? Are we taking Jesus into the world through our lives, through our hands, and our hearts, and our minds, and our souls? Can people look at us and say, that man, that woman, must be a follower of this man, Jesus. See how he or she loves. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now pray the creed as the church has taught us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he arose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Knowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now present our petitions to the Lord as we trust in his mercy and love. That the church may always respond to those suffering in this time of pandemic with open heart, open mind, and open hands. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those with civil authority may always remember they are to serve the people they lead, and that they may never stint in responding to the needs of their people, all of their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those searching for a cure, that the Lord will guard, guide, their hearts, their minds, and their hands, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who care for the sick, for our doctors, 
nursing staff, and all allied health professors. That God will guard and sustain them, giving them the strength and courage needed as they put their lives in danger to heal and comfort the sick and dying. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That a cure will be found and life-saving treatments be developed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in danger of losing housing, of going without food or health care, losing all of their belongings and with nowhere to go, that our governments and private organizations will be able to assist with funds and goods without considering race, creed, sexual identity, or any other form of discrimination, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that in their last hours they may receive comfort and know that they are not dying alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of our dead may be received into a place of light, rest, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who ask us to pray for them, for those who have no one to pray for them, for all those who are most in need of our prayers, that God will grant them the graces in which they stand the most in need of. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of your own petitions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, we pray that you will look with compassion on your suffering people, grant healing to the sick, peace to the dying, eternal rest to the dead, and comfort to the mourners. We also ask that you give strength to our health care workers, wisdom to those seeking a cure, and guidance to our leaders with the courage to, to do what must be done to save your people. Give us all courage and strength to reach out to those in need, to share your love to a suffering world. We ask this in the name of our risen Lord, your Son. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. I wish to this water and wine we become the sharing of the divinity of Christ, our Lord and Savior, share not the humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, and will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the gifts we offer you, your crew, our contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from every sickness. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands. The praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, receive our offering as we celebrate the ascension of Christ your Son. May his gifts help us to rise with him to the joys of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father all powerful and ever living God. 
we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Today, the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, ascended to heaven, while the angels sang his praises. Christ, the mediator between God and man, Judge of the world and Lord of all, has passed beyond our sight, not to abandon, but to be our hope. Christ is the beginning, the head of the church. Where he has gone, we are hope to follow the joy of the resurrection and ascension renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west the perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this. All of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup again. He gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. It is in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. He make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, those whose relics are reserved here, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Father, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope, Francis, our Bishop John, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you've gathered here before you. Mercy and love unite all your children, wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father and the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, who you grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. And you live forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In this name, Lord, the God and Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and trust you this evening. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your such a great love. Lord, we pray that you will be with each of us. Amen. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. It's the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, the Lord, am with you always, until the ends of the world. Alleluia. Let us pray. Father, in this Eucharist, we touch the divine life you give to the world. Help us to follow Christ with love to eternal life, we as Lord, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. 
And Almighty God bless you on this day when his only Son ascended into heaven to prepare a place for you. Amen. After his resurrection, Christ was seen by his disciples. And he appears to judge. May you be pleasing forever in his sight. Amen. We believe that Jesus has taken his place in majesty at the right hand of the Father. And you have the joy of experiencing that he is also with you in, for, to the end of time, according to his promise. Amen. With the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Queen of heaven, rejoice, alleluia, for the son whom you merited to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord is truly risen, alleluia. Pray for us to God, alleluia.